Ankylosing spondylitis is a chronic inflammatory disease of the axial skeleton that leads to the fusion and rigidity of the spine. It's described as a seronegative spondyloarthropathy, which is a group of four conditions with overlapping clinical manifestations. I remember them as the pair diseases. They include psoriatic arthritis, enteric arthritis, ankylosing spondylitis, and reactive arthritis. They are seronegative because in the blood or serum, there is a negative rheumatoid factor and are spondyloarthropathies because they all cause arthropathy or joint disease in the vertebral column. Before we continue, don't forget to hit that notification bell and subscribe. Let's discuss its etiology. All the pair diseases are strongly associated with the gene HLA-B27 on chromosome 6. HLA stands for human leukocyte antigen, which is a complex of genes that encodes for major histocompatibility proteins, or MHC proteins. We have two main classes of these molecules, and HLA-B27 encodes for a specific type of MHC class 1 protein. And although we're not entirely sure why, this is thought to be the cause of these autoimmunities. In general, MHC class 1 is expressed on all nucleated cells and acts to present intracellular antigens, like viruses, to cytotoxic T cells. If they're infected, or if something is in the cell that shouldn't be there, these cytotoxic T cells can then induce apoptosis. Let's focus on the presentation of ankylosing spondylitis. It follows a chronic relapsing and remitting course that typically affects men under 40 years old with symptoms that last for more than three or four months. It's important to consider articular and extra-articular features. It usually affects the sacroiliac joints first and then progresses to other areas of the spine. This causes morning stiffness and night pain, which is improved by exercise. People often forget that one of its hallmark features is enthesitis, which is the inflammation at the site of tendons and ligament attachment to bone. For example, it can cause Achilles tendonitis. Following inflammation and ossification, the spine progressively stiffens, leading to an abnormal posture or kyphosis. This is an exaggerated forward rounding of the back. If the costovertebral joints are involved, it can lead to reduced chest expansion. The most common extra-articular feature of ankylosing spondylitis is acute anterior uveitis, which is experienced by up to 30% of patients at some point. Conjunctival injection around the rim of the iris is a characteristic feature. This requires an urgent referral to an ophthalmologist. Other extra-articular manifestations can include constitutional symptoms like weight loss and aortitis, which can cause aortic insufficiency. Other than a good history, one physical examination to perform is the Faber test. This is when pain in the sacroiliac joint occurs on flexion, abduction, and external rotation. Another is called Menel sign. This is positive when there's tenderness to palpitation of the sacroiliac joint when it is displaced. The most important initial investigation is an anterior-posterior pelvic x-ray. One classic feature to look for is the dagger sign, which is a single central radiodense line caused by the ossification of the supraspinous and interspinous ligaments secondary to enthesitis. Another feature is the formation of syndesmophytes, which are paravertebral ossifications running parallel to the spine. This, along with the squaring of vertebral bodies, gives the impression of a bamboo spine, which is a pathognomonic radiographic feature only seen in ankylosing spondylitis. Finally, another important investigation to consider is testing for HLA-B27 itself. Although it's not a diagnostic test and should not be tested in all patients with back pain, it might be helpful in patients with a classic presentation, but normal radiographs. Management should include serious lifestyle interventions and pharmacological treatment if necessary. One consequential change patients can make to improve prognosis is smoking cessation. This is because smoking is associated with a greater disease activity. Regular exercise is not only important for improving strength and mobility, but it's also good for our patients' mental health too. Pharmacologically, NSAIDs are a cornerstone of the management of ankylosing spondylitis. 
Corticosteroid injections have a much more limited role, but still may be beneficial for enthesitis. Finally, disease-modifying anti-rheumatic drugs can be considered in patients not responsive to the above. One good way to remember some of these features is that ankylosing spondylitis is the disease of four. It is one of four seronegative spondyloarthritis, or pair diseases. It affects men under 40. Its symptoms last more than four months. Finally, it can be assessed with four things. The Faber test, Menel sign, a pelvic x-ray, and HLA B27. Thank you for watching Townsend Teaching. Don't forget to hit that alarm button, like, comment, and subscribe.